Hey folks, it's brew day. Got to keep an eye on my mash tun here. I'm filling up my strike water. Uh, nothing special going on today. My last keg kicked recently, so uh, this is a brew out of necessity. I need more beer. Uh, I'm making what I'm calling a best bitter. It's an offshoot of the Fuller's ESB that I attempted a while back. Uh, I ran out of some of the specialty ingredients, but I had some crystal malt left over. So I just mixed that in with uh, some base grains and uh, called it a, a best bitter. Could be a pale ale, who knows. Um, yeah, so that's the plan for today. Filling up the uh, strike water in the mash tun. Going to get everything heated and uh, we'll get brewing here in just a bit. So the uh, grist is pretty simple. I've got eight pounds of Brewer's Best Pale Malt right there. And uh, half a pound, eight ounces, of uh, Caramel Crystal 60 Love of Bond. Real close. There we go. Yeah, good. Okay. Eight pounds of pale malt, eight ounces of uh, Caramel Crystal 60. All right, so my strike water reached 166 degrees. Uh, I'm hoping for a mash temperature in the mid 150s. So it's time to dough in. I'm hoping for about 155 to 156. And that says 155.6. That says 156 even. 156.9. So I got some uh, temperature stratification going on here but I will call that a result all right so my pump is off uh, my 60 minute mash is complete and for those of you who may be new to brewing, I apologize uh, for kind of rushing through these steps. I keep forgetting that people may be watching who don't know all the brewing terms and uh, exactly what's going on. Uh, mashing is just soaking crushed grains in hot water to extract the sugars out of the grain. <clears throat> My next step is sparging. Now there's a couple of ways to sparge. Uh, one of the major, uh, more popular ways is batch sparging. And batch sparging is simply draining all of the wort that's now in the, the mash, uh, mash tun into the boil kettle. And then putting more hot water on top of those grains, stirring them, waiting a little bit, and, and rinsing the residual sugars out. Then you drain that, put it in the boil kettle, and you're off to the races boiling. What I'm doing is called fly sparging. Now fly sparging is just taking the uh, water from this hot liquor tank and liquor is just a brewer's term for clean water. Uh, I'm taking this hot water, slowly pumping it over the top of the grain bed and it'll drain through and slowly extract the sugars. At the same time, I'm draining 
the mash tun from the bottom into the boil kettle. So I've got a continuous flow. And the idea is to match your flow, keep it slow, so that you get a constant slow draining of those grains to extract as much sugar as possible. Which way is better? It's a toss up. So I've got my hoses all configured. Again, I'm going from the hot liquor tank into my pump. Uh, this hose is in the wrong spot. There we go. From the hot liquor tank, valves open into the pump. The pump goes into the top of the, uh, the mash tun. There's a spar jar inside, which slowly releases water over the grains. This hose comes out of the mash tun into the second pump, and that pump goes into the boil kettle. So, I'm going to start with this, make sure my flow is correct going into the boil kettle. Just want to crack this very slowly, get a nice slow flow going. And that's that looks pretty good to start with. Now I'm going to go over to the uh, hot liquor tank and adjust that flow. Really hard to get a good adjustment with these um, these kind of ball valves. This uh, Blickman style is a little bit better for controlling the flow. Matter of fact, I believe they're called flow control valves. But I think I've got it set up. It appears to be an equal flow from here to here, and then from here to here. Uh, all I have to do now is uh, wait till I get my boil volume, which is about eight gallons, and I've got a marker here, just a twist tie, a zip tie, on my sight tube. And when I reach eight gallons, I'll stop sparging, and then we'll start the boil. All right, I've been sparging for a while. Uh, I got to my eight gallon mark on my sight tube. I've already got the uh, burner or the electric element going uh, on the boil kettle. I started that as soon as the water was over the coils. You don't want to uh, turn on your coil dry. Uh, it'll burn them up. So I waited till there was liquid wort over top of the coils. I turned on that heat right away to get that boil going just a little faster. Uh, now I've completely stirred it up so there's no stratification going on uh, within the wort. Put a couple of drops on my uh, refractometer and my pre-boil gravity, that's the gravity of the wort before you start boiling, pre-boil, was supposed to be 1031 and I think I got 1031. Let's see if the camera picks this up. Not a chance. Okay, trust me, it says 1031, so I'm right on the nose. I got a brand new uh, refractometer with a dual scale. It has bricks on one side and uh, specific gravity on the other. I'm loving it. And it's got a little LED light, so you don't have to look right at the sun. Just remember to turn it off. There we go. So, Everything is right on target. I got the boil volume I wanted. I've got the original gravity I was shooting for. The heating element is on. Now it's just time to 
uh, start the boil and then we'll start adding our hop additions when the boil begins. Alright, as you can see I'm just coming up to a boil. Just a nice gentle boil for now. So let's add the first addition of hops. There will be three hop additions in this recipe. I'm using uh, East Kent Goldings. Uh, I buy them in bulk because I use a lot of Goldings, Goldings and Fuggles, because I make a lot of English recipes, British recipes. So I buy them in bulk and I uh, vacuum seal them in smaller packages. Uh, this recipe will use an entire two ounces. Uh, the first addition, which will go for 60 minutes, will be one ounce. And normally I would measure these out, but I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. There we go. There's an ounce of uh, East Kent Goldings. The next addition at 30 minutes will be half an ounce. And the final addition at 45 minutes, or 15 minutes left in the boil, will be another half ounce using all two ounces of East Kent Goldings. All right, here we go. It's five, four, three, two, one. There we go. That's 30 minutes down and time for my second addition of hops. Uh, again, I'm just going to eyeball this. It should be about half an ounce. And I haven't been measuring today, just kind of... Just kind of guesstimating. There. Close enough. Should be about half an ounce. So the Werflock and the yeast nutrient weren't the only steps that I missed. Uh, I missed putting in my half a pound of invert number three sugar. Uh, I probably just overlooked that. It was probably already in the recipe. Um, I should have done that at 15 minutes. I think I just missed it. But there was another step that I should have done at 15 minutes which was not on the brew timer. And that's uh, hooking up my counterflow chiller and let that run in the boiling wort for 15 minutes to uh, sanitize it. I don't know why those things were missing. I have default templates for recipes uh, that all include sanitizing the chiller, adding the Werflock, adding the yeast nutrient. All the things that I do in every recipe are on a template that I've made. So when I go to make a new recipe, I just grab that template and I add ingredients and everything else to it. It should have been there. It wasn't. I don't know why. But um, things like that happen. Uh, very few brew days go, very, go perfectly smoothly. So this is one typical brew day. I'm also a little bit shy on my volume. That'll probably come back to bite me as a lower volume uh, going into the into the keg. So, what are you gonna do? All right, almost the end of the brew day. Still a lot more to go, but this part is almost done. I'm draining the the boil kettle, I'm trying to drain it slow so as not to uh, suck up too much of this true. I'm going to take a gravity check. I don't exactly remember what I'm supposed to be getting. Let me check. All right, 1041 is what uh, I should have at the end of the boil. I got about 1046. Nope, 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 not 1046. 
1044. One, two, three, four, yeah, 1044. But I boiled down a little more than I expected to, so that could account for the, uh, the extra gravity. Um, all that's left to do now is to uh, transfer this to the fermenter and then pitch the yeast and show you a brand new toy that I got in the mail just this past week. All right, change of location. I'm down in the basement where my uh, fermentation happens. I've got the last bucket of wort. And I'm a little under half a gallon short. I was hoping to get six gallons into the fermenter. I knew that wasn't going to happen. I've got a little over five and a half. This is a yeast slurry that I saved from a previous batch. I think it was the uh, London, or not London, Fuller's ESB clone way back in April, I believe so, April, May, maybe. Um, I've been reusing this. Ever since I haven't bought a pet, well, I have bought a pack of yeast for an upcoming brew, but um, for the most part, I haven't bought more than two packs of yeast this whole spring and summer. Um, the one I've been using since April, and the one I just bought for an upcoming beer that I'm going to make a big Russian Imperial Stout. All right. Just pitch this right in. Now for the new toy. I found this in the for sale section of homebrewtalk.com. Something I told myself I would never expend the money for. 135 40 bucks for a hydrometer? No way. But uh, I found a, a good deal on this. It was $75 plus shipping. Ended up being like 90 a little less. Um, but this is a wireless hydrometer. You just drop it in. Let me see if I can find it on my phone right now. All right, so here's what my tilt hydrometer is telling me. My gravity is 1043, and my temperature right now is 73 degrees. What did I say that my gravity was uh, post-boil using my refractometer, 1044? Not too bad. And I can log all of the changes, everything that it records, uh, onto the cloud into a uh, Excel spreadsheet and it will track and show me the uh, the fermentation over a period of time. Pretty cool. I wouldn't spend $140 for it, but for $75, yeah. Cold beer. Brew day is done! Well, well, yeah, well, 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 well.